Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Grant Tungay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So welcome to this Eucharist on the 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time. The readings today speak of a choice that we have. Do we serve God or not? Do we follow Jesus or not? At the moment, we are given an opportunity to look back on our lives, to see whether we have made those choices for God, for Christ. And where we haven't, we can acknowledge that and come to God for his love and for his forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the Christ. highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God of heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. In those days, Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Sheshem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, if you, are, if you be unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went. 
and among all the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and, Taste and see, see that, that the Lord, Lord is good. I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise of him is always in my mouth. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord turns his eyes to the just, and his ears are open to their cry. The Lord turns his face against the wicked to destroy their remembrance from the earth. Taste and see that the Lord is good. When the just cry out, the Lord hears and rescues them in all their distress. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Those whose spirit is crushed he will save. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Many are the trials of the just man, but from them all the Lord will rescue him. He will keep God over all his bones. Not one of his bones shall be broken. Taste, Taste and see, see that the Lord is good. Evil brings death to the wicked. Those who hate the just man are doomed. The Lord ransoms the souls of his servants. All who trust in him shall not be condemned. Taste and see that the Lord is good. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subject to another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, be subject to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its saviour. As the church is subject to Christ, so let wives also be subject in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives. As Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Even so, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. For he who loves his wife loves himself. For no man ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, and I mean in reference to Christ and the Church. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, many of the disciples of Jesus said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples murmured at it, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? 
It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is of no avail. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you that do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who those were that did not believe and who it was that would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples drew back and no longer walked with him. Jesus said to the twelve, Will you also go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the American poet Robert Frost wrote what is now a very famous poem about journeys called The Road Not Taken. It's a beautiful poem about a person walking along a road and comes to a place where the road splits into two roads. The traveler has a choice. Which road does the traveler choose? One road is well-traveled, used by many people in the past, but the other road is less traveled. And the traveler notes the growth of grass and other vegetation on this path that is absent on the other well-traveled route. The traveler eventually chooses the path which hasn't been used by people or many people. And the famous last line of the poem is, Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Why would this road have made all the difference? The sense that one gets from the poem is that the choices that we make on our journey impact the journey, sometimes definitively. As Robert Frost says in the poem, he knows that a journey could consist of many roads that split off from one another, and he is not sure whether he will ever get back to the original route that he was on. The choices we make impact us and impact our lives. And sometimes we only get to make an important choice once. Our very identities are constructed by the choices we make. This comes out in the first reading for today, the reading from Joshua. Joshua gathers all the tribes of Israel together, and although it's not included in the text of the reading today, there's at the beginning of chapter 24, Joshua recounts in God's words what God has done for Israel, the long journey that Israel has been on because of what God has done, in response to what God has done. And then Joshua puts a choice before the people. Choose today who you will serve. Other gods or the gods, other gods or the God of Israel. He reminds the people of the wonders that the God of Israel has worked for them. That he's led them out of slavery and brought them towards the promised land. Then he asks them, what will their response be? And the people answer, we choose God. We will serve the Lord. And it is that choice that will go on to shape Israel. God called them together and they chose to serve the Lord. And this choice will go on to constitute the very identity 
of Israel. This theme of choices comes out again in the gospel reading. Jesus has offered his teaching to his followers. He has gathered people together through his teaching and invites them to base their lives on it. Because as he says, the words that he speaks are spirit and they are life. The community that he has formed through what he teaches will have life because they follow him. Sometimes, of course, his teaching can be tough. And some of his followers are hesitant about making a definitive choice for Jesus and for the group that he has formed. So he turns to the 12 and he says, what about you? Do you want to go away too? But Peter, in his classic response, says, where are we to go? You have the message of eternal life. Peter makes the definitive choice for Christ. And on Peter, Jesus builds his church. The choice that Peter makes constitutes his very identity, as well as the identity of the group that gathers around him and the Lord. So what is the invitation for us today? Like the first reading from Joshua, we can give thanks for all the good that God has done for us and continues to do for us in our lives. We can acknowledge the importance of our Christian community, even when gathered digitally around the table of the Lord. Our choice for Christ, our yes to him and his community he has gathered constitutes a fundament, fundamental part of who we are. We are invited to give thanks for being a part of this community. And we are invited to renew our dedication and commitment to Christ and his church. Why would we do that? Because we acknowledge that through Christ and through this community, we have life. Eternal life is the gift of God to us and through his son. He is nurturing this gift in our hearts, in our minds, and in our very homes. So let us profess our faith together as we say, I believe in God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We gather our prayers together and present them to God, our provider, for his grace. For the followers of Jesus, that their lives may bear witness to the faith they profess with their lips. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Jewish people who first heard the word of God, that they continue to grow in the love of God's name and in faithfulness to God's covenant. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For government leaders, that they may strive to promote the well-being of all of their people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who are suffering, 
that their pain may bear fruit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the dead, that the Lord may free them from the shadows of death and gladden them with the light of his face. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own special needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us gather our prayers together. Loving Father, you are the source of all things that are good. These are our prayers. We ask all of them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes, be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, to the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the devour of God's church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Let this he cast in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood 
of your, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bhuti, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I say a word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son, in the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.